We've determined that the balanced gain difference amplifier amplifies the difference in voltage between the two input terminals, or that for the difference amplifier, V out is equal to R2 over R1 times V in 2 minus V in 1. We define the differential gain, or A sub D, to equal then the ratio of V out over V in 2 minus V in 1, which is equal to R2 over R1. Now, there's a very convenient property known as common mode rejection that results from this differencing amplifier, from the operations of this differencing amplifier. As we've mentioned, a common application of differencing amplifiers is in automation and instrumentation systems where the signal of interest arises from some type of a transducer. Generally, the voltage across the transducer leads is relatively small. Here we've got it noted as VID, which is just VI2 minus VI1. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here for future reference. VID is equal to VI2 minus VI1. And generally, that voltage is relatively small, on the order of, say, a millivolt. Now, these systems are frequently embedded in a relatively noisy environment with electromagnetic noise emitted from other devices such as motors, actuators, and transformers. The leads coming from the transducer are embedded in this noise and act as antennas absorbing some of that, electro or that electromagnetic energy that absorbed energy creates a noise voltage in addition to the signal of interest. And we've modeled that absorbed noise here as two voltage sources. Because those two leads are embedded in the same, you know, they, they typically are right next to each other in the same um, noisy environment, the absorbed energy will be very close to the same on both of them. And because it absor is absorbed on both of them, we say that it is common to both leads, or it is a common voltage to both leads, and, we're re and we'll uh, refer to it as VICM, or as the common mode voltage at the input, and it's present on both of the two terminals. Depending upon the situation, that common mode voltage can be on the order of volts and literally bury the transducer signal in the noise. The difference amplifier tends to cancel that common mode noise. So again, here's the situation that we've got transducer generating a relatively small voltage embedded in a noisy environment that absorbs some of that energy in the form of a common mode voltage. As connected, the measurement circuitry has a difficult time detecting the actual transducer signal because it's buried in this noise. So the trick or the solution with this difference amplifier then is to insert the difference amplifier between the transducer and the measurement circuitry. And as we're going to now show, the result of that is that the difference amplifier will actually cancel the common mode noise. We've previously demonstrated that the output of the difference amplifier, V out, is equal to R2 over R1, the difference gain, times the voltage here minus the voltage there. Well, the voltage here is VI2 plus the noise voltage plus VICM. Now, the voltage here is VI1 plus VICM, and at the output, this voltage is, or rather, this voltage here is subtracted from this voltage there. So we have VI2 minus VICM on the on this lead minus VI1 plus VICM on the second lead. And as you can see, the differencing applies to the common mode voltage, and because it's the same on both of them, you get VICM minus VICM, and those two terms cancel. The differencing operation actually cancels, at the output, cancels 
that common mode noise. And we're left with then, in the ideal circumstance, V out is equal to R2 over R1 times VI2 minus VI1, which is what we've wanted all along. We've, ar we've already determined that the differential gain A sub D is equal to R2 over R1. Now using the principle of superposition, we can um, deactivate the actual signal from the transducer and look at just the effect of the amplifier, the difference amplifier, on the common mode input. And in the process we can determine the common mode gain, ACM, which is equal to V out common mode, or the common mode voltage out, divided by the common mode voltage in. Now, as we've already pointed out, in an ideally balanced differencing amplifier, where R4 over R3 equals R2 over R1, we've already seen that the output voltage, VOCM, is equal to zero. So, the common mode gain is then zero over V in common mode, which equals zero. Effectively, we're multiplying this common or this a common mode noise by a gain term of zero and giving us zero volts out. Now, a measure of how good this actually happens is known as the common mode rejection ratio, or CMR. It shouldn't surprise anybody that it's uh, virtually impossible to exactly match the ratio of these two resistors with the ratio of these two resistors. And it's also true that the common mode noise on each of the two transducer leads isn't exactly the same. And we're going to learn later on that these amplifiers are not actually ideal. So all of these imperfections are going to lead to a common mode gain something other than zero, but still hopefully much less than one. That the common mode gain will be an attenuation. Nonetheless, the common mode rejection ratio is defined as 20 log of a magnitude of A sub D, the differential gain, divided by the magnitude of the common mode gain. And obviously this is expressed in terms of dB, and typically we talk about common mode rejection in terms of dB because hopefully, the, uh, at least if we've, done our, if we've done our job as engineers correctly, the common mode gain is going to be significantly less than the, uh, than the differential gain. And ideally then, if ACM is zero, we've got some non-zero number divided by zero, the common mode rejection ratio will be infinite, at least ideally.